Good morning. August the 24th, 2017. We're here for our one year Bible study. <laughs> Continuing to read in the book of Job, God continues to deal with my heart and give me new revelations. Good morning, Michael, man of God. So good to see you. Hmm. I want to remind everybody that April the 27th, 28th, and 29th of 2018, we're starting back our... Uh, Dream Big Ladies Retreats. I think this will be the eighth one that we've had, but we did take four years off that we didn't have them. So um, excited to have everybody back together again. It's a very, 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 very powerful time with the Lord. Very informal environment. We're going to go to Post Oak Lodge outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Go to Post Oak Lodge, Tulsa, Oklahoma on Google. Look up their facilities. It is absolutely spectacular. It's beautiful. The idea is for us to um, come together as sisters in Christ and enjoy God's creation through the environment. It's just such a beautiful, beautiful setting out in the middle of the hills um, where we can take nature walks. We can commune with God in the environment which he created for us. And we kind of do it in a slumber party type style. Um, we get together in the big lodge. They have a big living room area where we can come together and have our sessions that we just kind of sit around on the couches and the chairs and, and the floor on pillows if you bring pillows, um, lawn chairs if you bring a lawn chair. But anyway, very, very informal and we sit around and we get to know each other. First of all, we form very strong bonds with one another so that when our arms are weak and we're having a hard time praying, we've got sisters that'll come along and hold our arms up and pray with us. And that we're, we, we seek God to hear what God has to say to us. So hope that you guys will come. It is um, April 27th, 28th, 29th, 2018 at Post Oak Lodge, Tulsa. And surprise, 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 but the rooms are filling up fast. They have 60 rooms available. And... Um, well, you want to get your reservation in. There's some rooms where you can have four people, get your girlfriends together, share the cost of a room. Uh, the other rooms um, can sleep two in it, so uh, you can split the cost uh, to keep the cost down. They have food that's available there. I'll be getting those prices out. So I'll be checking my Facebook page, the website. Um, you can check the website as well. So anyway, just wanted to advertise that, tell you all to do that. Don't forget to subscribe and share to the Facebook post so you get notified when we're doing our Bible studies. You can do the same thing on YouTube so you're notified when I post the YouTube videos of our Bible study. It's all for God's glory, and it's all to get you to seek Him through the Word. <clears throat> it's not about following Elizabeth. Uh, I'm just here to facilitate the walk, remembering Back 15 years ago, when I first started reading this one year Bible study, it's um, um, Old Testament, New Testament, Psalms, and Proverbs um, that uh, we read through every single day. And I can remember how hard it was. I mean, and I'm not going to tell you it's easy now. There's days I didn't read this year, I haven't been a hundred percent faithful. I've missed some pages. Now, for those of you that have it, when you follow this plan, You've read the Bible all the way through from the front page to the back page, and there's been many years I've done that without missing. I had to play catch up a time or two because this isn't about a religion. It's not about a law. We don't read because we have to read. We don't read to get God to love us. We don't read to get God to speak to us. We don't read to get God to reveal himself to us. We just read because we love him and because this is him and because we desire him and, and we long to know him. And um, this word is one of the most powerful ways to do that. So anyway, August 24th, Job, chapter 12 through chapter 15. <laughs> I mean, they really pour it on today, uh, his friends. I, again, I think about why we're here, why Job is here. He has been afflicted by the enemy. God gave the enemy permission to kill his kids, to take all of his physical possessions. His wife is still alive, but he, other than that, he lost everything. I went from being an extremely wealthy man to be to being um, just, I mean, 
devastated. He had nothing left. His children had been killed. And then if that wasn't enough, then the enemy came and afflicted his physical body. And he's got boils and sores all over him to the point that Job started this whole thing out praying, you know, against the day he was born, praying that he could die. And uh, his friends come over, sit with him for a week in silence, and then proceed to open their mouths to comfort him. And in today's reading, boy, that comfort <laughs> is something else again. Uh, so anyway, it's, they, you know, he, they tell him, you know, how... Oh, that you would keep silent, that you would be your wisdom. Hear now my argument and listen to the pleadings of my lips. Will you speak falsely for God and speak deceitfully for him? Will you show partiality towards him? Will you plead the case for God? Will it be, be well with you when he searches you out? I, I mean, it, you know, Job and his friends are going back and forth, and it builds momentum, and kind of like arguments that we can have today when we open our mouths, we're not silent, and it, and it just... It just keeps pouring out. Keep listening to my words and let my declaration be in your ears. Behold, I've prepared my case. This is Job saying that he wants to go before God and prepare his case. And his friends are telling him he's a fool and that he sinned. And that if he'll just admit how horrible he is, that uh, he'll get better. And <laughs> so anyway, it's just, it just, what a picture of how we do things. You know, we, we let the enemy seep in. We, we, we believe lies, we let the world impact us, and then the next thing you know, we're deceiving the people that we love the most. I mean, we just leave off a little bit of truth, and or we just insert a little bit of non-truth, and, and then it just grows, and it picks up momentum, and, and then things are being said, and uh, of course, we all know how it ends, because we've read the book of Job before. God's words are powerful, but First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 29 to 58. Remember, this is Paul writing to the church. He's writing to believers, the church of Corinth, um, that are having troubles, they're, they're struggling, and uh, he, he doesn't pull any punches. I mean, in this feel-good feel good world that we're in, oh, my tiptoe, or... Um, we might hurt somebody's feelings. If we hurt somebody's feelings, they might not come back to church. Um, Paul doesn't mince any words. Um, they've been arguing about whether there'd be a resurrection or not. He continues on with that. But quite frankly, folks, you know, we can take that and we can read it physically because they were physically arguing about the resurrection at that time. But we can allow the Spirit to speak to us about the resurrection we experience as soon as we die to self and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and we realize he is who he says he is and we're going to allow him to be who he says he is, we are resurrected at that point in time into a new creature. All things become new. Our mind starts being transformed into the goodness and to the truth of, of the word of God and of who God is. So <clears throat> um, anyway, uh, he doesn't mince any words about it. So uh, he, he tells him, he said, uh, let me, let's see, what do I gain if humanly speaking I fought with beasts at Ephesus? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Mm, that'll preach in this day and age of everything goes. If it feels good, do it. If it don't feel good, find something that does feel good. Um, Wake up from your drunken stupor, as is right, and do not go on sinning. And do not go on sinning. Now, I would venture to say there is evidence to support my claim that there hasn't been a living human being walk this earth that had any more revelation knowledge of who Jesus Christ is, why he came, what he accomplished when he came, than Paul. And yet it's Paul's words right here that says, wake up from your drunken stupor as is right and do not go on sinning. There's one road, a uh, ditch on the side of the road that says, oh, there's no such thing as sin. You can't do anything wrong. Jesus's blood covers everything, um, which there's some truth in that. Jesus's blood does cover everything. And then there's the other side that it's just, you know, fire, fire, brimstone, and hell is all that they talk about. And, 
And here's Paul talking about sinning. Now, now, if indeed sin isn't an issue in our life, why in the world is Paul talking about it? Jesus has already came. Jesus has already been resurrected. He's already at the right hand of the Father. Um, the day of Pentecost has already come. The Holy Spirit has come in and, and has filled him full of the Holy Spirit, and he still tells them, stop sinning. Do not go on sinning. There's truth in this, and there's truth in between both sides of that ditch. Yes, all of my sins are covered. I don't have to live earthly fear about my sin, but there are earthly consequences when I choose not to live the righteous life that Jesus died to give me. Um, and, and Paul is flat out telling them to stop it. Stop making bad decisions. Stop getting drunk. Stop going on in your sinful ways. For some have no knowledge of God. He, he's saying that their, that their uh, behavior showed such that there, there was no evidence of a knowledge of God inside of them, not by the way they live. And, and we just have to be so careful, so careful. And, and what do we have to be careful of? We have to be careful of getting so full of ourselves that we think we know to the point that I give myself a license to do absolutely everything. See, I can't give myself a license to do just anything. Now, Jesus gave me the freedom that I can do anything. I can get drunk. I'm free in Christ. He covered my sins. But if I choose to do that and continue to, to do those kind of things, there are consequences for that. And you can't escape the consequences of that. Um, and, and, and here's the deal, guys. You're not going to get revelation knowledge of that walking in judgment of each other. You're not going to get revelation knowledge of that when all you're doing is pointing out somebody else's sin. You're also not going to get revelation knowledge of that if you continue to go out and drink and, and carouse and gamble and do all the things the world does all the while saying, oh, there is no sin, there is no sin. One's just as bad as the other. But, but this is where I long to get my revelation knowledge of what God is telling me because God will tell me Elizabeth, I don't want you to do this. Elizabeth, I want you to do this. Elizabeth, you have freedom to do this. And it's a personal, intimate relationship with the Lord that I long for. And in that personal, intimate relationship with the Lord, which is why I read the Bible from front cover to back cover every day. I don't read it to impress anybody. I don't not read it to impress anybody. I don't do a Bible study to impress anybody. I read it because I absolutely have to have his help every single day of my life. I have to die to myself, not make it about me, not make it about what my knowledge level is, not make it about what education level I have, not make it about what economic status I live in. I have to have him every single day of my life to speak to me right where I'm at on August 24th, 2017, so that I can overcome this flesh, so that I can overcome. And it's not I that does it. It is he in me. It is Christ in me, the hope of glory that rises up in me when I'm willing to lay it all down. I don't have to be right about sin. I don't have to be right about judgment. I don't have to be right about this and that. And I don't have to be, all I need, all I have to have is him. Every single day, it's him. It's him. It's him. I don't have to argue with you about what your doctrine is. I don't have to argue with you about what your theology is. I don't care. I care that I love you. And I care that the doctrine of love supersedes all other doctrines. And I can do that. I can love you. And you know what? I have to love myself before I can love you. And I cannot love this filthy rag of self, self if I don't open my heart up and allow him first to love me. And in the days, in these 15 years when I'd open this up and I'd get nothing, I wouldn't get anything out of it. I'd say, oh, Lord, I know there's a message in here. I know you've got a word for me in here. Give me a hunger for your word. Show me. Show me. Put that hunger in my heart. 
Because on my own, I had no hunger. My flesh didn't want to get up at 4.30 in the morning and read like I had to do when I had my other career. It, it was 4.30 in the morning before I could read. If I didn't get up at 4.30, I didn't have time. I had to be at work at sometimes 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning. But, but when I die to myself and I, and I not make it about my flesh and I make it about him and I ask him to help me, he always helps me. He always helps me. And I don't have to worry about scriptures anymore that says, wake up from your drunken stupor as is right and do not go on sinning. Uh, for some of you have no knowledge of God. See, I don't care if you think I have knowledge of God or not. I know what I know that I know I have in my heart. Now, I can feel sorry for you if that's the way you're judging me, but I'll still love you. It doesn't matter what people say about me. It, it, you know, I, t I had a conversation not that long ago with somebody who was defending me because somebody said something. And, and I said, I'm not a sideline Christian. I'm not going to be on the sidelines. I'm, I'm, I am a professor of the love of Jesus Christ. And as long as I'm a professor of the love of Jesus Christ, they're going to, they're going to come against me. And, and woe be unto them. Good morning. <laughs> woe be unto them. I don't have to worry about them. I just got to love them. I just have to love them. That's what I'm called to do is to love them. And I can do that as long as I open myself up and let him love me first. So that's for the Corinthians. Um, it, it was good stuff. The sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's the victory that I long for. It's the victory that I, that I desire. It's the victory that will help me live an overcoming life in him. And, and the whole power is not what Elizabeth does. It's not how often I read. It's not how often I pray. It's not how often I'm good. It's not how often I'm bad. It is how often am I saying, Lord, it's not about me and it's all about you. I, in my weakness, you're made strong. So love y'all. We'll talk again soon. Bye-bye.